Hey everybody, my name is Zach. I'm a small excavating contractor out of Canton, Ohio, and I just got done building my very first, and possibly the first in the world, though I'm sure somebody else has done it somewhere else at some other time, mini excavator crane mat. I had such a good time building this one, I wanted to share with you the next one. I will go over dimensions, a build process, weight, and at the end of the video, I'll even give you a rundown on the cost of what it costs to build one of these things, at least in my area. And hopefully what it would cost you or something like that if you were to build one too. They're pretty straightforward. It just takes a few tools and a few different materials. They're not hard. So I have a pond dredging job coming up. It's just a little pond. It doesn't make sense to move a bigger machine in. And so I'm gonna try and do it. <laughs> gonna try and do it like Chris from Let's Dig 18 and uh, go out there with some mats and my little Cat 305 and, and see if I can avoid getting stuck. But that's another project for another video. So let's get started on these mats. Timbers, these old railroad ties are just a little bit more than I want to pick up by myself. I'm not even sure that I could, but it's even more than I want to pick up with somebody else helping me. So I'm setting them in here. I, I dumped them out of my dump truck right there, and I am setting them in here into the, the shop here with the machine just to save my back, you know? I was able to hand pick the, the ties that I wanted, which was important to me. Railroad ties are typically made out of hard woods. I believe the ones I've drilled for the other mat were made out of oak. My limited wood identification skills. And this stuff's pretty heavy. I think oak, or at least the pin oak around here is somewhere around 80 pounds a cubic foot. Then when they're soaked in creosote or whatever, they dip these things in to keep them from rotting. They get a little bit heavier more than that. I've got four timbers in each mat. And so I moved four into the garage and into the staging area there at a time. And that just works out pretty good and saves me some time. I was able to hand select my railroad ties out of the pile, which was super nice because, you know, these are all used. Some of them are a little worse shaped than others, but uh, I think I got a pretty good batch. I mean, it's not like we're going to be setting an actual crane up or anything on them. And I think for the most part, they're all pretty good. Something I'd look to recommend you watch out for is just how checked they are. And by that, I mean these cracks here, how big these cracks are and, you know, if they're split on the ends and that kind of thing. These four aren't too bad. They're probably a good example of what I got today when I picked them up. We'll go ahead and get to boring them out. Now, most railroad ties around here in the U.S. are standard seven inches by nine inches by eight and a half feet long. So that works out for a machine, which is, I think, just shy of seven foot wide. It'd be nice if they were maybe nine or ten foot long, but it is what it is. You know, you can't have everything, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt them all together on the short edge, meaning that the long edges will all be on the same plane. And what we'll end up with is four nine inch widths. That'll make a 36 inch mat by eight and a half foot mat. And that I think will work out pretty good. So what I do first is I get my, my first timber all set up here. I'm bolting these together with three pieces of three quarter all thread. And so what I do is I countersink my holes on the outside timber. So I'm gonna do that here on this right now. I just put my outside bolts about a foot in. And then I measure one for the center. I don't even know what this thing is called, but I picked it up at the home improvement store. And what it does is it just makes a, a hockey puck like hole. You know, it's two inches in diameter and there's no center to knock out like as if it was, if I'd used a hole saw. I think it works pretty good. It does need a bigger drill than this little guy, but you know, I use them what I got here. Just kind of eyeball in the center because it ain't gonna be that perfect anyway. Oh, time for a new battery. Ha, that's way better. I just go about the depth that the nut and washer take up so that way they're not sticking out of the mat at the end. Mm -hmm. 
Then since we're using three quarter inch all thread, I got a 13 16 inch auger bit. That was just a little bit of play. If I got a three quarter inch auger bit, it would have been a lot harder to get them things through the hole. And maybe this isn't even a Trek technically auger bit. I don't know, but it drills big holes and big heavy hard things. It works pretty good. That last tool I used left a little center hole. I'm just gonna start with that. That way my hole will center it up inside my recess and I don't have to worry about the washer not fitting in the hole right now. So I'm just gonna eyeball it as straight as I can. I don't even know, are you supposed to clean this out, like pull it up out of the hole? Cause this sure is hard to pull. If you don't clean it out, it seems to build up a little bit of heat and kind of bog down. There sure is a bear to get up out of there. It's interesting to see how well the creosote penetrated the wood when they made these, because sometimes the chips come out wood colored, sometimes they come out in black. Sometimes they come out different colors for different parts of the timber. All right, we'll tip this over, get all the shavings off. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this one on top of the next one that we're gonna drill. That way we can match drill. Maybe there's other people that can use power tools better than me, I'm sure there are, but I can't get my holes lined up perfectly without, just for measuring. So I just match drill everything. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna set this up on the end, and I'll set it up on the short side, and then we're gonna set this up next to it, also on the short side, and then I'm gonna walk one timber up on top of the other one. Very carefully, it's very finger pinchy. Yeah. Also toe smashy. Try to get it lined up there. I suppose I could make like a pattern with a two by six or something that's easier to move around. But the reality is that even if you get the angles off, you know, I'm, I'm just eyeballing the angles and if I don't get them perfect, it'll make quite a difference when we do the final assembly, I think. Up. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drill through and mark our holes. I'm just going to mark them in case I want to change up the angle and make it a little better. Okay, now I'm going to leave this one with the top side tipped this direction because that's the way I'm going to want to assemble them when I do the final assembly. It's also important to get the same sides made it as when you matched them. I'm going to speed this process up so it doesn't get too boring. We're going to match all of these and then we'll start putting the all thread through them. We're going to match these up the best we can here, try to make sure there's no debris stuck between them. And these are not all, they're not exactly the same length and that kind of thing. So sometimes it takes a little bit of figuring, a little bit of bumping to get them lined back up the way they were originally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the nut on, I'm going to run it down just a little bit further than the end of the rod. And the reason is I kind of want that rod to get mushroomed. I don't want this nut to back off and I'm never going to have to get this nut back on here, hopefully. <laughs> Should never have to get this nut back on here. Once it's on here, it should be together forever. We'll put this in here. And looky there, it isn't lined up perfectly. Now I'll just give it a little love with a hammer.
Now I went and I bought a bunch of three foot pieces of all thread. And the reason I did that was because it was the same price per foot as buying a longer piece. They already have the threads nice so you can start them. You don't have to worry about, you know, when you cut a piece of all thread, it's hard to get a nut on there sometimes. So unfortunately they didn't have enough 36 inch pieces for me to do everything. So I did buy a couple six footers and I gotta go cut those in half real quick. I wanted to get these two nuts threaded to either side of my cut so that way they're there and they're ready to go when it's time to put these pieces in. I just want to show you in case you hadn't seen, there's a trick to it. You take an air nozzle, you can blow on a nut and it'll spin real fast down there. I'm not that good at it, but you get the gist. Probably works better on smaller stuff. I thread these nuts on first before I cut it so I didn't have to fight getting this nut over top of the burr that gets created when you cut all thread. Then I left the nice end, the factory end, uh, to be on the other side where I got to thread it on anyway. Oh yeah, real nice. Oh, that was a little too far. Oh yeah, like a glove. All right, now on this last one, because the dimensions are just a little bit different, I think this one's a little bit wider, and when I was setting them up and match drilling them, I just kind of put it in the middle and hope for the best. Now that they're all laying on something, a uniform surface here, all thread needs to come up just a little bit to make it into this hole. So what I'm gonna do is just throw the floor jack under here and jack these up a little bit. As Malcolm used to say, we're not building grandma's countertops here, this is just barn construction. That was when I was working on the barn with it. Driving a little bit hard, but it's going. What we'll do is we'll get the two ends in and then hopefully the middle will go. We'll see. Before I put that in, I want to see this one go in. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect, great. All right, now we're on this side. We've got our, our all thread sticking through. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and put a washer and this will be the moment of truth, you know, if we got our our recess here centered up. Ooh. Well, it ain't perfect, but <laughs> I think it'll work for us. I'm sure that nut will draw it down in there nice. The real problem is that these washers are a little bit big around for the size of our recess. Um, it washers are about two inches in diameter and I got a two inch a bit and uh, just a little bit tight. Now it's just some wrenching. If I was cool, I'd have a you know power tool do this for me, but I haven't been doing this long enough to have enough money for that. So that day will come. All right, there she is, all tightened up. You can see there's not, not real much 
for gaps there between the timbers. We do have a little bit of a nub sticking out. I'll probably cut that off so it doesn't catch on things. On each one of these, these uh, pieces, I'll throw that tightened up. This mat should weigh somewhere around 800 pounds. Each railroad tie is about 200 pounds. You know, they can vary depending on moisture content and wood density and that kind of thing. But I don't know, that might be a little too much for a 35 size machine, but it seems to be just right for a five ton machine. I'll pick it up out of here and you can see how she handles. As you saw, she was a little bit tippy. I picked it up over the side and it's, it's you know, it, it's right there at the maximum. I don't have an extra counterweight on this machine, so maybe that would make a difference, but uh, you can run it out to full extension over the drives and obviously over the blades, no problem. Um, now as for cost of these things, I had to buy the railroad tires. I got those for 25 bucks a piece. Uh, the all thread was about $5 a foot, you know, nuts and washers. And then I also had to buy those two bits. And so buying everything, spreading it out over the cost of making four mats, I come out somewhere around $170 a mat. To me, that sounds like a pretty fair deal. I don't know what full-size crane mats cost, but I'm pretty sure they're a lot more than that. Even if you were to get them and cut them in half, I think you'd find that they were more expensive. By the way, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to catch these crane mats in action, or I guess mini excavator mats, either way, if you want to catch them in action, be sure to subscribe, and I will upload a video of me trying to use them. Sink or swim, I'll upload it, you know? However it turns out. If this video's been out for a while and I've already uploaded that other video, I will go ahead and edit this video and put the link in the description so you can find it, you know, for a few weeks past when I release this video. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you on the next one.